Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Kumar and today we'll be studying circles lecture two. So we'll be starting this lecture with circles under special conditions. So there are five cases in total. When the circle touches X axis, Y axis, X and Y axis both passes through origin and circle passes through origin and has intercepts A and B, okay? Now let's look at the first condition when circle touches X axis. So it can be above it, it can be below it, but we'll take this condition for now. So we have center H and K and we have the radius R, okay? Now in our general circle, we have three variables, X square plus Y square plus two GX plus two FY plus C equals to zero. We have the variable one that is C, this is second, this is third. C is basically, you know, corresponding to radius of the circle. So basically we have two, three variables, sent two coordinates of the uh, circle center and uh, the third one is radius obviously. Okay, so we have these three variables and we have to, we, ha we need actually three equations or three conditions to find out these variables. But over here is one condition is given, you know, in, uh, in a hidden format. So we have this center H and K. Now, if you, if you look closely, you can see that this radius length of radius is same as the K coordinate because this length is same as the K coordinate and that is also R, right? So you can write K in place of R. You don't really need to put R and K separately. You can write K in place of R. Okay. So now we have just two variables H and K and with the help of two conditions only our entire circle equation can be found out. Okay. So this is how you have to treat this case one. In this case, you'll be needing two conditions, two addition conditions, other than the condition that the circle is give, uh, touching X axis. So that is also one condition. Other than this condition, we need two conditions more to find out the variables H and K to finally find out the equation of circle. Okay. Now let's look at the second case. Second case is exactly similar. So we have, sorry, we have a circle which is touching Y axis. Now in this case, if the center is H and K, now radius would be H because this X distance is nothing but the H coordinate and that is also equal to radius. So again, we need two more conditions to find out the equation of circle. Now the third case is the circle is touching both X and Y axis, right? Now in this case, let's say if this is H and K, now this should be H and this should be K, right? But we know that radius is equal, both radius should be equal because they belong to the same circle. So eventually we have just one variable, let's say H only. So we can write the center as H comma H and radius is also H, okay? Now two conditions have already been utilized. The first is touching my axis, second is touching X axis. We just, we just need one more condition to find out the H variable and basically to find out the entire equation of circle. Okay, so this is our case three. Now the fourth case is, the circle is passing through origin. Now in this case, the general equation is X square plus Y square plus two GX plus two FY plus C equals to zero. Now if it's passing through origin, you can put the value zero comma zero over here. You will see that C comes out to be zero because this is having X, this is having Y, this is X, this is Y square, this is X square. If you put zero over here, you will get C as zero. So in such a condition, we can directly write at, write the equation as X square plus Y square plus two GX plus two F Y equals to zero. We can directly write the equation of circle like, like this. So we have two variables here and we need two more conditions to find out the equation of circle. So this is our case four. Now let us talk about the case five where circle is passing through origin and also making intercepts A and B in X and Y axis respectively. Okay. This is our origin. Now, interesting thing over here is coordinate axis make 90 degree with each other. And if I join these two points, I can clearly see that this is a right angle triangle and right angle triangle forms in, in a case when these two points, let's say this point is capital B, this is A. When this AB is the diameter of this circle, right? Only in that case, this can be 90 degree, right? Now, if we have got a diameter and since we know these intercepts A and B, basically we know the coordinates of A. So that would be A comma zero. And over here, it would be zero comma B. So if we know the coordinates of diameter, we can write the equation of in the diameter form, right? 
so that would be x minus 0 x minus a plus y minus 0 y minus b equals to 0 so we can also write out write down the equation of circle in the diametric form in the diameter form right so basically in this particular case we already had three conditions the first condition is this condition that this intercept is being given second condition is this intercept is being given the third condition is the circle is passing through origin so we already had three conditions given so that is why we can directly find out the equation of circle from these three given conditions so this is our case five so you don't really need to remember these things it's for the just you know demonstration purpose that how should you approach uh, to find out the equation of circle when certain conditions are given, whether it's, it's touching x axis, whether it's touching y axis, whether it's touching both x and y axis, whether it's passing through origin or this particular case, you should be understanding the basic concepts that you should be needing three conditions minimum to find out the equation of circle. Okay. Now let us look at this question. The equation of the circle passing through three comma minus six and touching both the axis. So this is our third case, right? Let's see how to do it. So for, first of all, we locate this point three comma minus six. This is, let's say this is one, two and three units and six units downside should be somewhere over here. So the circle is basically passing through this point three comma minus six. So basically we have to consider the center of circle somewhere in the fourth quadrant. There is no point in considering the circle center of circle in the first quadrant or second or third quadrant. We should be considering our center of circle in the fourth quadrant because it would form a circle, something of this sort, right? Common understanding. So let's say our center of circle over here and uh, let's say this radius is R length of radius is R. The important thing is length of radius is R not the coordinate of radius length of radi radius is R over here. So basically R is positive. And if we are taking uh, the point in the fourth quadrant, so basically we should be considering the center as R comma minus R because R is positive. Okay. So that is why we should be considering R comma minus R in the demonstration for the cases. We took the first quadrant. That's why we took H comma H. But in this case, since we are talking about the fourth quadrant, we should be considering R comma minus R where R is positive and that is radius. Okay. So now we can write down the equation of circle as X minus R whole square plus Y minus minus R whole square equals to R square. Right. And since this circle is passing through this point, we can put this value in this equation right that should satisfy so we have 3 minus r whole square plus minus 6 plus r whole square equals to r square so this gives me r square plus 9 minus 6 r plus r square plus 36 minus 12 r equals to r square this r, r square gets cancelled out we are left with r square minus 6 and minus 12 that becomes minus 18 r and 36 and 9 that becomes 45 equals to zero. Now, if I do the factorization, I'll be getting R minus 15 and R minus five, now R minus three. Okay. Equals to zero. So we're getting R equals to 15 and R equals to three or R equals to three. Okay. So these are the two possible values of radius. Now, how to visualize it? We thought, uh, the circle would look something of this sort, but one more possibility is there that a bigger circle can form of something of this sort, like it's touching the X axis over here and Y axis over here and it's forming a big circle. That, that is why uh, the radius is 15 and this radius is just three. So radius just three is this one and the radius with 15 uh, is the bigger one. Okay. So we have these two answers. Now you can just plug the value of R over here and you can find out the two values of equations over here and match the options. Okay. Now let's look at this question circles touching X axis at a distance three from the origin and having an intercept of length two to seven on Y axis R. So before starting the, this question, let's talk about the concept of intercept in case of circles. So if we talk about the X intercept, so when a circle cuts the X axis, then this distance is called as X intercept. And when the circle cuts the Y axis, then this distance is called as Y intercept. Okay. It can be positive on the positive side on the negative side but this is how the intercept is being defined. Now this question has an interesting twist over here. So it is saying that distance of th distance three. So basically it's using the word distance over here and over here it's using the intercept of length two root seven. So we talked about this in AOD and straight lines. When we talk about just intercept, if we say intercept equals to five, that means that is the positive five. We'll be taking on the positive x axis or positive y axis. 
but when we are saying intercept of length to root 7 that means it can be either on positive side or on the negative side because length is not negative okay length is uh, doesn't include the signs length is just the magnitude so basically it's saying that the magnitude of intercept is to root 7 it can be on the positive side or on the negative side so basically sorry so it can have 2 root 7 over, over here or 2 root 7 over here. Similarly, distance 3 from origin, it can be either on the positive side or on the negative side. So basically, it will be having four cases, but we'll be considering just one case and you can solve the rest one similarly. So let's talk about the first quadrant case over here. So we have this circle and this distance is 3 comma 0. So basically, uh, circle is touching at this particular point. Okay. Now the circle is forming like this. Okay. And let's say this is the center. This distance is two root seven. Now we know that radius is perpendicular to tangent. Okay. At this particular point, radius is perpendicular to tangent. So basically the center is also having the uh, X, X coordinate of three and Y coordinate of radius because this is touching the X axis. So this is radius and this a y coordinate should be equal to radius only. Okay. Now this is also equals to radius and this distance is three, right? As given in the question, this distance is three. And uh, we know that because of the symmetry, we can clearly say that if this distance is two root seven, this entire distance is two root seven. And if we are dropping a perpendicular over here, so this distance because of the isosceles triangle, this distance would be uh, root seven only. So from here, to here, this distance would be root seven only. So we have root seven over here. We have three over here. We can apply Pythagoras to find out the radius, right? So R square equals to root seven square plus three square. That would be seven plus nine, 16. So R equals to four. So radius is four. We have got the radius as four. Now we have got the radius. So basically we have got the center coordinates as well. So the center coordinates are three comma four. Now you can find out the equation of circle easily. X minus three whole square plus Y minus four whole square equals to four square. So this is the equation of our circle. So I think the answer would be option C. Now let us talk about position of a point and from here onwards, we'll be introducing one notation called S and uh, that would be very important for the entire conics. We'll be using that notation in the conics, other conics as well. That is basically parabola, ellipse, hyperbola and that you should be remembering. So before starting with that notation, let us understand the concept of position of a point. So we talked about position of a point in case of lines as well. In case of line, it was with respect to a line, right? And uh, this, if I put this value in this equation, line equation, and if I put this value in this line equation, both of them would fetch opposite values of opposite signs, right? So that was the condition over there. Now uh, let's see how we develop the position of a point in case of a circle. So let's say we have a standard circle with center at 0 comma 0 over here and radius r. Okay. Now there are three points. This point is P1 and uh, there is one point called P2 on the circle and there is one point called P3 which is inside the circle. Now the common sense says that if this point is P1 is outside the circle, so basically this distance CP1, CP1 should be greater than r. If this uh, point is on the circle, CP2 should be equal to R. If this, this, if this point P3 is inside the circle, CP3 should be less than R. This is the common sense, right? Now, how to use this common sense to form a generic equation for position of a point, okay? So let's say the coordinates of all these points are X1 and Y1, all these points, okay? These are the variable points X1 and Y1. Now, if we take the first condition where uh, this, this point is outside the circle. So basically CP1, that is at this distance, that would be, so basically under root X1 square plus Y1 square should be greater than R. That is what we mean by CP1 is greater than radius. Okay. Now if I square it both sides, we know that under roots are always positive, radius is positive. We can square it and without changing the sign. So basically if I square this equation, we'll be getting X1 square plus Y1 square greater than r square. Now if I take this r square towards the left side, I'll be getting x1 square plus y1 square minus r square greater than zero. So this is our condition. Now if I take the second condition where I'm talking about cp2 equals to r, 
I'll still be getting x1 square plus y1 square minus r square equals to zero. And the third case will be getting x1 square plus y1 square minus r square less than zero. So this is giving me a hint that what I am doing, I am putting the value of x1 in the circle by taking r square towards the left side. I am putting the value of x1 and y1 in the circle and just comparing the values with respect to zero. If it is less than zero, that basically means the point is inside the circle. If it is equal to zero, that means point is on the circle. If it is greater than zero, that means point is outside the circle. So, so that is actually very simple to understand, right? Now we see this particular term x1 square plus i1 square minus r square. Now from now onwards, we'll be doing s note. We'll be talking about s notation. Okay. So s is equals to x square plus y square minus r square. So what we actually did, this is common for every conic, be it a uh, circle, be it parabola, be it ellipse. It's common for everywhere, every conic. So let's say I have the circle x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals to zero or plus c equals to let's say k. What I'll do to write the s. Now s over here would be x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c minus k equals to zero. So this is our k. This is our s notation. Now if I put the value of uh, this uh, point over here x1 y1 that would become s1. Okay, that would give me x1 square plus y1 square plus 2g x1 plus 2f1 to f y1 plus c minus k. Okay, now we have to compare this s1 with respect to zero. If it is less than zero, basically point is inside the circle equals to zero point is on the circle. And if it is greater than zero point is outside the circle. So be it any conic as of now, we're just talking about uh, this circle only and this condition is for circle only. But we'll be using this S notation for other conics as well. So you have to remember how to form the S notation and we'll, we'll be utilizing this S notation for many other conditions. So that was the first condition which you should be remembering that in such a case S1, S1 is greater than zero. That means point side outside the circle. S1 equals to zero point is on the circle. S1 less than zero point is inside the circle. So this is the condition which you have to remember. S and S1 notation, very important for conics per perspective. Okay. Now let's talk about this question. How many tangents can be drawn from the point five by two comma one to the circumcircle of the triangle with vertices one comma root three, one comma minus root three, three comma minus root three. Now, first let's plot these points. And as I've said earlier in, I think in the previous lecture, whenever you see three points, the first thought should not be of x square plus y square plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equals to zero. And now I'll be putting these three points and getting three equations and three variables in g, f, and c, and then solving them to find out the equation of circle. You don't really have to do that in most of the cases. The first thought should always be to plot these points first, see if this is forming a right angle triangle or an isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle. That would make your life simpler. So, first of all, we'll plot these points. Okay. So one comma root three. So one is somewhere over here and root three somewhere over here. So this is one comma root three. Okay. One comma minus root three. So that is exactly opposite one comma, sorry, one comma minus root three and three comma minus root three. So that would be two units away. That would be somewhere around here. Three comma minus root three. Now I can clearly see that these two points are having common X coordinate. So that means this is a vertical line, a line perpendicular to X axis. And these two points are having common Y coordinate. So that means this is a horizontal line that is perpendicular to Y axis, right? So that means this point, this point is having a 90 degree angle. So that is, it's a right angle triangle, right? And when it is a right angle triangle and, uh, and uh, the circle is passing through all these three points. So basically these two points are the di diameter of the triangle, diameter of the circle, right? The circle would look like something of this sort. Now, and we, when we know the diameter uh, points of the diameter, we can write the equation of circle in the diameter form, right? So that would, that would be X minus one, X minus three plus Y minus root three, Y plus root three. So this is the equation of our circle goes to zero. And now we have to see how many tangents can be drawn uh, from the point five by two comma one to the circum circle. Now we have an external point somewhere over here. Let's say this is five by five by two comma one. We don't really know if this is point external to the circle or it is internal to circle. We don't really know. How can we do that? We'll write S notation over here. 
now since we don't have any constant over here s notation would be this only s would be x minus 1 x minus 2 plus y minus root 3 and y plus root 3 okay this is rs now we have to write the s1 notation and check if it is greater than 0 if it is equals to 0 or if it is less than 0 and if we check it we can see that s1 comes out to be less than 0 then it's inside the circle if you see that if it's equals to 0 it's on the circle and if it it is greater than 0 it is outside the circle and that you can do easily so just you, you just have to plug the point 5 by 2 comma 1 on the on this equation in this equation and you just have to compare it with 0 to find out the answer okay now if the point is actually outside so basically if it if s1 comes out to be greater than 0 in that case we'll have two tangents if it is on the circle if it if, if it comes equals to 0 that means we have just one tangent if it is coming inside the zero that is less than zero in that case we don't have we don't have any tangent from that point on this circle okay so today's lecture was till here only and i have tried my best to uh, solve the questions with the help of only basics no fancy formulas no standard formulas because you won't be needing those formulas in the actual examination they are not going to ask you very standard questions and neither too difficult questions that you have to use very advanced concepts okay so only thing you have to focus in on the basic concepts and that would solve all your pgdbo problems related to circles so let's meet tomorrow thanks for watching